Hello everyone, and welcome back. As promised, here's the continuation of the gold series. Like I alluded to last time, today we're going to be going over the other, other popular video on the topic of gold. A while back, both myself and Lazy Maybe made a video on gold, and we came out with very differing results. But having had some time to mull over, review, and pull apart some of the finer details of his video, I'm ready to acknowledge some of the stuff that he put in there. And while we can all agree to disagree, I think there's a lot of factual information that I can point out as incorrect. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, to be as accurate and as true to this conversation and dialogue as I can possibly be, I'm basically just going to be doing a one-for-one -one acknowledgement and walkthrough of the video that Lazy made on gold a while back. And I don't want to I don't want anyone to feel like I'm targeting Lazy because I really do appreciate all of the work that he does for the community and 99% of the time his information is right on the money and when it isn't he obviously corrects himself in his follow-up videos. So I don't want to smear his name or anything on the on any topic, but I think he's definitely missed the mark on this one and that a lot of people are taking his word on the subject at face value and not sort of listening to anyone else because of the whole RP conversation. And just because the numbers guy said gold good, they now think that is a golden ticket to say, hey, gold good, and no one can argue with that fact. So we're just going to go through this video. I'll jump around a little bit. But for the most part, we're just going to be going through the entire video, and I want to talk about the specific points where I think he's missing some information and letting his testing method lead him astray from a real result. So we'll just go ahead and start. Is gold worth it? This is a good question, and it's something I thought about myself. With the Mission Selector mod, we can take out a lot of variability in the results by replaying the same mission once mining gold, and once skipping gold. But if I do it like that, the second run will have an unfair edge, because I'll already know the mission and can do things faster. Okay, now here's something I'm really happy he acknowledged in the original video, but it's an issue that he still isn't fully understanding in his testing modality. So I'll, he explains it well in the video, but I'll go ahead and explain it myself. Essentially what he does is he uses the Mission Selector mod, which allows you to play literally the exact same mission, vein for vein, cave for cave, everything will be exactly the same. It allows you to play those missions repeatedly. This is a sandbox mod, of course, but that doesn't matter for the sake of this testing. So essentially what he does is he runs a control run to familiarize himself with a cave where everything is, and then he does one run, only mining, crafting minerals, and the killing the occasional loot bug and getting gold chunks. And then he does another run where he deliberately goes out of his way to kill all loot bugs, get all gold, and do all the extra stuff as well as getting the crafting minerals. But there is an issue in his overall testing methodology, is that he gets a freebie run the first time around to figure out where the valuables are. I understand that for the sake of this test, in saying in each mission, how can we wring all of it out and make sure we get all the gold? He did, he absolutely met the mark for what he was setting out to test. However, this is not how we actually play the game. We don't play seeded missions. We have to make decisions on the fly based on what we think is valuable in that situation. So moving on to the next cave in a mining mission with the knowledge in this scenario, in Lazy's testing, the knowledge that there's three veins of gold in that next cave, that changes the, the choice making. So by the fact of him knowing where the gold is and just walking between the veins and mining it, that produces a different result than actually playing the game and having to make decisions on the fly on whether or not you want to leave a cave sooner with potentially less items or gamble, go deeper, and potentially not find anything. So once again, his testing method is great. It gets all the gold on one run with a 100% certainty in a decent amount of time because he knows where it all is, and the other run, it saves time by ignoring all the gold. 
However, this doesn't account for the fact that you will waste time looking for things that aren't there in real gameplay. Sometimes you will miss objects by leaving those missions early. However, you save time in every mission while only occasionally missing some items. Not to mention that gold is not worth the time it takes to mine comparatively to crafting minerals, but that's something I'll get into later. But that's the first big point that I want to stress with this video, is his testing methodology is not true to how we actually play the game. We don't have knowledge of where everything is in a mission. For the sake of this test, he has a perfect method, but when it comes to practical applications to day-to-day -day gameplay, it's flawed. So, let's go on. Here's my results for short mining missions. These values highlighted in red or green are the important ones. They're what actually shows the time efficiency of these. Okay, so skipping ahead to his results from his fir first batch of testing. So to break this down, the way he tested it, obviously he did his control run, his gold mining run, and his gold skipping run. And then he did that on three separate missions, so for a total of nine runs. So we can see the different results here in the top, middle, and bottom. So I'm not too worried about the exact numbers because what we're going to go into later absolutely shreds all of these numbers apart. But this takes us to the second bit of faulty... I don't even know what to call it. Just the... He's kind of gotten lost in the process here. So as we can see on the top one, he has the mineral value and the minerals mined. Obviously there's some slight variance just due to the way that DRG works. We're not worried about the slight variance. The mistake that he's making here is attributing the mineral value to both runs equally and not giving them any sort of actual sway in the calculation. So let me explain. The value of your time is better spent getting crafting minerals and then getting another mission going and getting more crafting minerals than it is getting any quantity of gold. Because as we can see here, in the first run, having about 100 minerals gives you 5,000 credits. And unfortunately, he neglects to directly display how many credits he got from gold in this table, but we can figure it out just by looking at the numbers comparatively. So the raw credit stat on the gold run versus skipping gold run on the first mission is 1,000 credits in difference. Now this is pretty good for the average mining gold versus not mining gold run. Most of them are a much tighter race in my experience. But as you can see, he costs, it costs him about 110 seconds, which is two minutes on top of a 10 minute mission. So obviously I'm just using vague numbers here, but that's about a 20% time loss when it comes to the total run time in the mission. But as we can see, we're talking about 1000 credits here, a 1000 credit difference. And if we compare that to our mineral value for only 100 minerals, that's a very low amount for Hazard 5. Your average mission will yield a lot more on longer missions and also Mineral Manias will be closer to a thousand on good days. So just a hundred minerals is yielding you 5,000 credits. Whereas spending an extra two minutes of time on top of getting those minerals already is costing you 10 to 20% longer mission times. So you see what I'm saying here? is that the total credit value of this mission is around 7,000. 1,000 of those credits are increasing your mission time by about 20%. If we look at the third mission here, we can see about the same result with a loss of around 100 seconds. However, the minerals that he got massively outweigh the value of the gold difference. So if we just say we lost 800 credits by not mining gold and finishing at 730 seconds rather than 820 seconds, we still have 13,000 credits worth of minerals to play with. So here's the total average for all of the runs put together. We can see about the same is true, 100 seconds loss to mining gold, and it gives you somewhere around six, 700 credits more. And once again, the mineral value completely dwarfs all the other values when it comes to credits. But this is where Lazy makes a really weird decision in his in his calculations, I guess you would call it. Maybe not even the calculations, just the 
conclusion. And I'll go ahead and let him talk on that now. But your total credits per second are slightly higher, skipping it, due to the high value of selling crafting minerals. Now, it's easy to look at these numbers and say that skipping gold is superior. After all, your total credits per second, including the value of minerals, is higher, and your XP per second is slightly higher, too. But that's making a pretty big assumption, which is the idea that you are actually going to sell those minerals. This is a safe place. Be honest with me. Be honest with yourself. After the mission ends, are you really going to sell these minerals? Probably not, right? Maybe sometimes the daily deal if it's good, but that goes through your stockpile at an extremely slow rate. Besides that, you're sitting on them until you absolutely have to use them or sell them. Because why wouldn't you? Okay, this is the biggest flaw in this entire video. The assumption that you're not selling minerals, which is just faulty logic, and that's the nicest way that I can possibly say it. So, yeah, I agree with you. No one is wrapping up their mission and running over to this terminal to sell 90-something Enor Pearls and 20-something Umanite. That's not happening. I completely agree with you here. No one is lying to themselves and saying that's what's happening. However, if we just sell minerals when we need money, that eliminates your view of this topic entirely. As we can see from your own mineral totals here, you have an extreme outlier in forms of Umanite and Krapa. So, if you were to ever be desperately in need of credits, you could easily come over here and sell merely a thousand of each and make a hundred thousand credits, which is a significant chunk compared to what you're sitting on right now. Now keep in mind that we don't have to sell every mineral that we get, but minerals are worth so much more than gold that it's essentially pennies versus dollars. We're talking about making hundreds of thousands of credits without any additional effort on minerals that you have in excess that you do not need in comparison to slowing down every mission that you play both in moment-to-moment -moment gameplay by physically mining gold and also your methodology and mental state when playing those missions because you're exploring the caves more than you need to to mine more gold, which might not even be there. Once again, I'm not disagreeing with you, no one sells minerals after every mission, but it is extremely easy to only sell minerals for daily deals, and hell, even buy them when you're extremely desperate for minerals, which I don't think happens to anyone outside of the early game, and if it does happen to you, you simply need to play more. That's the only solution, and I have no way to sugarcoat that for you. If you are low on resources, specifically crafting minerals, you need to play more. You only get a certain amount of overclocks per week. So yes, if you do not play a significant amount for, say, a month on end, those overclocks can very rapidly deplete all of your resources if you are not playing the game outside of obtaining and purchasing those overclocks. If you play six missions a week and all of those missions give you overclocks that cost 8,000 credits, then yes, you will definitely fall behind. But, when we're talking about the average mission, and assuming you're getting an overclock from each mission, no amount of gold mining is going to give you 8,000 credits from that single mission. But getting back on track, we'll let Lazy talk about the last major fault that I think he has in this video. You can say that it's a strength of minerals over credits that has two uses, or rather that it has two values. The first is the crafting value, how it's a requirement for forge recipes, promotions, and mods. And the second is the credit value, what you get when it's sold. But that first value also makes them relatively inflexible. You don't actually normally want to trade them in for credits, because if you wind up needing that mineral for something, buying it back is three times as expensive as selling it was, or requires more time grinding. Why sell the relatively rare materials that you may need to unlock things if you're getting credits normally anyways? So that second value, the credit value, doesn't typically get realized outside of the rare situation where you actually sell the stuff. And if it's not ever realized, it's meaningless. This is a huge mistake in the calculation. At no point it, in progression, at any stage, would I ever recommend anyone buy minerals. If you need minerals, you need to play missions in the respective biomes to get them. 
At no point would I advise anyone to sell three times as much Umanite to buy one third as much Magnite. Instead, we would play a mission in Magma Core. So trying to strip away the credit value from Minerals Mind is honestly really ridiculous to me. Because using the system that I've outlined, which is selling only minerals that you have an excessive amount of, you will not ever need those minerals. Sure, you will eventually use that amount of minerals. If you have 10,000 Magnite, you sell 2,000 of it. Sure, you will still use 10,000 Magnite at some point in the future. However, it gives you time and credits in the meantime to play more missions, get more Magnite naturally, not by purchasing it, and eliminates your credit concerns completely, absolutely, and for the foreseeable future. So once again, the gravest mistake in this entire video is discounting the value of crafting minerals. Because from this point on in this video, he treats the missions as if minerals do not exist for grinding credits. And obviously, whenever we're talking about just gold versus no gold with no minerals involved, gold is going to make you more credits. Absolutely. That's whenever you simplify it to a point where there's no other nuances or factors involved, yes, gold will have more value. But crafting minerals are the linchpin and the crux of this entire argument. And you absolutely can sell them for extreme profit at any level of progression. And anyone that tells you otherwise is incorrect. At all points of progression, you will have an excessive amount of a certain type of crafting mineral. Outside of your very first promotion, you should not be hurting for all six types of minerals at one time. If you end up playing five or six missions in the REZ in one day, you will have an extreme outlier of Umanite compared to Enor Pearls. And the great thing about it is, if you are already lacking Umanite and Enor Pearls, now you don't have to sell them. You can just keep them, and whenever you continue to play missions in different biomes, you will see that outlier emerge. Everyone's on a completely different path depending on the class that they play and the overclocks that they happen to get in what minerals they will have to pay more of. However, there is no mineral cost so great that it completely outweighs the amount that you'll get. The early game is very temperamental in this way because you might pick up four upgrades in a row that all cost the same type of crafting mineral. But even in that situation, credits aren't what's holding you back. It's the crafting mineral. So go get more of that crafting mineral, and regardless of whether or not you mine gold, you will be able to receive your upgrades. And just to let Lazy say one last piece, just to defend himself in a way, I really do think this is just coming from a place of ignorance, not intentional malicious behavior. He will literally say it himself. Never realized it's meaningless. I know personally, I essentially have never sold minerals until the one time I decided I was going to craft all the Forge cosmetics. See, and in that situation as well, you had enough crafting minerals. It was the credits that you needed. So I almost can guarantee you that whenever you went to sell minerals, you sold the ones that you had the most of. So you understand the method that I'm going for here, and you know that it works. It's just that you didn't actively think about it whenever you were going through it, which I'm no shame. I'm not trying to be rude or say anything negatively towards you. It's just that you're seeing this conversation and the research that you've done through a very specific lens, which is trying to justify mining gold. Because making crafting minerals irrelevant in this argument, considering that they are more than half of the value, even in the most average possible situations, is very odd. And it doesn't make sense based on the numbers that you're showing us you are actively finding a workaround to make crafting minerals irrelevant in the conversation, which seems at least a little incorrect to me. Which, on top of buying out the shop, bankrupted me pretty quickly. So I sold a lot of minerals to get over that hump. 
but then once I was past that, I was right back to hoarding them again. And most players won't even wind up doing that in the first place. It is strictly rational to say that the minerals are each worth 50 credits and incorporate that into credit gaining efficiency. After all, that credit value is still technically available, but player psychology is not strictly rational. You have to consider what your goals are when playing the game. Most players are not just looking to make credits go up and nothing else. And I completely agree with you. But whenever we're having this conversation about numbers, specifically how to gain credits in the fastest amount of time, then yes, we do have to set aside personal player psychology and talk about the numbers. And the numbers that are directly in front of us say that crafting minerals are far more valuable than anything else that you can do with your time for credits. And yes, I understand what you're saying when it comes to needing those crafting minerals for other things, but that is the beauty of them, is they don't immediately make you make this decision. Like you outlined in the video of ending a mission and running over and immediately selling the minerals, you don't have to do that. They sit there as long as you need them to, until you need credits. You don't have to make the decision in a mission. There's no point in the game where actively playing the game, you need credits. It all happens in the space rig, where you can make these decisions and weigh the numbers, the pros and the cons, and see what you need for those specific upgrades or items that you're looking for. So trying to use player psychology as an argument against factual information that you yourself have gathered and presented to us, I mean, sure, some players will just want to see number go up, but then you immediately turn around and say you shouldn't think that people are just interested in making the credit number go up, but your defense for that is saying people also want to see the mineral number go up. So I think we're very making a lot of assumptions about individual player psychology when it doesn't even matter at all, because we're strictly talking about numerical fact. They want both credits and minerals to go up at the same time. They want to use minerals to forge items or pay for promotions, not trade in for a more common currency that they probably have enough of. And as it turns out, mining gold means you get more credits per second while still retaining all of your minerals to use on the things that require them. See, that's the thing though, is you don't have to retain all of those minerals. If we do a little simplistic math here, we can see that in order to make up the loss that we take by not mining gold, we don't have to sell even close to all of the minerals. In this scenario, it would only require us to sell 14 of the 135 minerals to make up the shortfall. And once again, we don't have to even sell 14 minerals from this data set. We can wait and sell a hundred from the next two sets. We, or we can sell zero from all of those and 300 from the next. At any time, we can actively make this decision to transform crafting minerals into that less valuable and more common currency, as you say. It's about the perceived rarity of each individual crafting mineral type. Yeah, if you're low on one type of crafting mineral, it is rarer for you than the other ones are. So, you have a more common form of currency in that more common crafting mineral that you can use to turn into credits. Even if you do sell all your minerals and skip getting gold to save time, you're only slightly more efficient in gathering credits than if you actually got the gold. And this is just factually not true. Just to requote what you just said, if you were to skip gold and only gather minerals and sell them all, you would only gain slightly more credits than if you mined the gold. Now, you yourself just said that the player is perceptually not selling any of these minerals. But for me in this scenario, as someone who is skipping gold and who is selling a decent amount of their minerals, I am gaining a significant amount more credits than someone who is mining gold playing slower missions, and not selling their minerals. Because as you said, if we don't sell minerals, then that value is conceptually and factually zero. So for the player mining gold, they're gaining 3,669 credits per this mission, whereas I'm gaining 2,900 
plus the amount of any minerals that I sell up to a point of 6,775. Now, once again, I'm not saying I'm going to sell all the minerals from this mission, but between myself as the skipping gold player and the player who is mining gold, any amount of credits that I gain from selling minerals skyrockets me ahead of the gold player. Because even if I only sold half of these minerals, I'm still making approximately twice as many credits from one mission as they are. So by your own parameters that you've set out for this experiment and this data set, what you said is just not true on this topic. So here's the mathematics we use to find the value that we perceive to have from each individual mission type. Notice that the most important factor, crafting minerals, is missing. And I think something that's very disingenuous, once again, that we touched on before, is that we cannot exactly quantify the amount of time spent mining gold as being the time spent mining gold from this experiment set. Because you have the exact knowledge of where the gold is and how to get to it in the most efficient way. So realistically, this isn't comparable to normal gameplay. Because in normal gameplay, you don't know where objects of value or gold are. So you will spend at least more than no time looking for things that aren't there. You see what I'm saying? In this set of experiments, you were able to quantifiably know exactly how much there was to get and only spend the time required to get that amount. This is a perceived perfect execution of mining all gold, which in practice will be extremely rare not if, if not impossible. And this is all ignoring the fact that we have completely disregarded crafting minerals at this point, which is by far the most single valuable factor that you could put into this entire equation, but it's been completely sidelined due to the irrational decision that it's up to player psychology and the numbers are more important to the player's mind than they are to our actual mathematic decision making here. And I don't think any player is viewing this equation as the value of their mission gameplay. So why are we able to draw that line and say, well, crafting minerals are different because no one's going to sell them, when that's objectively not true, and by saying that in this video, you are perpetuating a fallacy, to, for lack of a better term. By telling people that no one's selling crafting minerals and they're not worth selling, you're doing people a disservice. Because people have come to this video for information. They want this mathematic information right here. However, by omitting the information that you have, you've done a significant amount of harm to a lot of players' decision-making process, and I think that's very, very upsetting to myself and a lot of others. How about a bulk blows up in a tunnel, producing around 1,200 more gold? Since Crassus gold walls are thin, so it takes more pickaxe swings to get the same amount of gold compared to normal things, I'll kick up the time spent per unit of gold to 0.9. That might be assuming more of a time penalty than there really is, but nonetheless, the credits per second has now climbed all the way up to 4.28. And on this previous topic discussing the Crassus detonator, we won't go into extreme de detail about it, but the thing with Crassus detonators is depending on the mission type, you also have to account for the fact that you're spending more time fighting ambient swarms than you are actually just putting pickaxes to gold. You can't directly say, it takes me as much time as it takes for me to hold right click on all of this gold and get it down. Because the pacing and the tempo and the ambient enemies of the game do not account for that optimal efficiency. Like yes, this is a perfect world mathematical scenario, but judging by the fact that we've already omitted crafting minerals, I don't think it's justifiable to give yourself the optimal conditions for doing something as, which is as large a swath of time as mining an entire Crassus detonator by hand. And even at this, the amount of credits that you'll get from mining that Crassus detonator is still only equivalent to one mission of minerals. So us being able to set aside one single mission where we sell all of the minerals, that equates to all of the time taken to mine the Crassus detonator which makes our mission longer 
and keeps us away from our next mission for a greater amount of time, whereas just selling off those minerals is something we can do after the fact without actually slowing down that mission where we gained those resources. You see what I'm saying? Class, the credits per second has now climbed all the way up to 4.28. And of course, if you're using thin containment field or just some good scouch movement, you can gather gold more quickly, improving this number. And as a result, your credits per second. Not to mention groups will generally be more efficient at grabbing deposits than solo players. So really these numbers are pretty conservative. And see, I think in regards to actually putting pickaxes to gold, you're correct, you're correct on that fact. However, it doesn't help and it actually hinders even more greatly the mentality of looking for gold. Because having that newer player that watches this video and sees mining gold is good, wandering off by themselves in an attempt to find more gold, getting themselves killed, and thereby reversing the progression of the rest of the team through, say, a Morkite mining mission in order to save them, is infinitely more harmful than the benefit of the lower and less conservative numbers that you might put into this information. We're speaking in hypotheticals here, but you're already talking in hypotheticals with the perfect timeline for getting gold. And in a competent group of four, you can expect better efficiency than that. Yes, and in a competent group of four, you can go even faster by ignoring gold and only getting the valuables. So you can effectively apply that increased time standard to the primary and secondary objective, as well as the total mission completion, not just the mining of gold. You see what I'm saying? Is not only the amount of gold that you're able to mine and the amount of time it takes you to mine it benefits from having four competent players, all the numbers go down because gold be does not become a more significant portion of this ratio. If anything, it becomes even less valuable because no matter how good you are at the game, it still takes the same amount of time to mine the gold at a very base layer. Sure, we can talk about thin containment field, but a scout can only physically mine gold so quickly. And there's no amount of skill that can improve that. But if we want to talk about clearing the actual mission itself, a scout with excellent movement and advanced gameplay technical skills can finish a mission two or three times faster than anyone else can. So having that individual wasting their time mining gold, which is a trivial task that isn't worth the time that it takes to execute, comparably to getting something like crafting minerals and selling a, just an iota of them, is extremely disproportional in its value. Especially since you'll have moments where you're just waiting on another player for whatever reason, and you might as well mine that nearby gold vein. This is the only part of this video that I really strongly agree with, is there are moments where it does invert completely and gold becomes worth your time because there's nothing else around you that is of value. When you're waiting for the drop pod doors to open, assuming no one in your team is clipping, then yes, it is valuable to mine gold because there's nothing else of value to do. But if at any point you are not progressing the primary or secondary objective, or not advancing towards the end of the mission in every way that you possibly can in favor of mining gold, that is where the issue arises. Not from the slow moments where you're waiting on something to happen in the mission, but from the moments where you are making an excuse to mine gold. But I do strongly disagree with your wordage there, which is that you're waiting on another player to do something. If you're waiting on the engineer to platform a vein of Morkite, that is not a reason to mine gold. You're waiting on a driller to dig through a dirt wall. That's not a reason to mine gold. You should always be doing everything in your power to push the mission forward, whether or not you're at peak efficiency. Because the least efficient thing you could be doing at any moment in time, aside from when you are chained and restrained from finishing the mission by game mechanics, the least efficient thing you can be doing is mining gold. Oh, and before I forget, Here's the numbers on pots of gold. Not only does it get you way more direct credits per second, but it gives you so much more credits that you actually still make more money, even if you're selling all of your minerals, and you get more experience. So- And, like, I understand that pots of gold, while it does slow you down a significant amount, the numbers do swing very heavily here. The words that you just said aren't true. You said that the amount of credits that you get 
instantly outweigh what you get by selling minerals. But if we look at the numbers that you're displaying on screen for us, we see that that's not correct. We, if we take 1800 plus 4600, add those together, that's what, approximately 6400 credits? You said that you get more credits just from mining gold than you do from doing that, which just numerically isn't true. So yes, in this scenario, you would have to sell all of your minerals to make that movement happen. However, I just find it a little odd that that was your line of thinking for this, even though those numbers aren't true at all. Because once again, we apply the same logic where the player that's mining gold is not selling any of those credits because they have no perceived value. So in that situation, we're making more credits by selling minerals and playing the mission faster rather than playing the mission slower and mining all the gold. And I think it's a very conservative estimation to say that having pots of gold is only slowing you down by 140 seconds. But additionally, the mental gymnastics of having other players join your game that potentially might not have pots of gold, restricting you to mine it all yourself is another issue entirely. All right, that about wraps things up. That was the painful part over with at least. Once again, I want to reiterate, no hate towards Lazy for this, I just wanted to clear the air and clarify that there was a lot of mistakes in that video. Especially for how often I see it cited as the end-all, be-all in gold-related arguments on the subreddit or on the Steam discussions. Someone says, hey, is gold worth it? Someone links that video and tells them to shut up. And in all actuality, yes, in a vacuum, gold is good, but... Compared to anything else you can do with your time, gold is the worst thing you can do with your time. So I hope you all enjoyed and hopefully learned something. Once again, you should go back and watch my first gold video or my first first gold video if you really want a lot of information on the topic. But regardless, I'll reiterate what I said in my previous two gold videos. If you just enjoy the act of mining gold, I'm not here to change your mind. I'm just trying to give you numerical information so you can play efficiently if you'd like to. And if you've watched this far into the video, hopefully we can have some more intelligent discourse in the comments than I like mining gold, you shut up. But in wake of all of this, I've had Lazy maybe review this video as well, and we're going to get together and do some sort of tear down on this entire topic as a whole, as well as pointing out some of the straw man arguments that come from both sides of this conversation. So once again, no bad blood, and stay tuned to his channel to see that. But that about wraps things up. If you'd like to join, become a YouTube member, get early access to videos along with some other perks, you can check out the join button down below. If you'd like to catch me live, you can find me over on Twitch. If you'd like to tell me that gold is the most important thing in any video game, you can find me and my community over on Discord. And as always, thank you for watching, and have a nice day.